Hello. This video will guide you through the process of enabling Cloud Balancer as a service in VMware Cloud Director, which is accomplished thanks to its integration with VMware NSX Advanced Load Balancer. Only a few simple actions are required so cloud providers can start offering their tenants the option to activate and maintain load balancing even by themselves only within the Cloud Director UI. Let's begin with the integration part. As it's required to have an NSX Advanced Load Balancer controller already in place and accessible from the VMware Cloud Director cells. At least one NSX cloud needs to be created in this controller and at least one service engine group should be defined. Under Infrastructure Resources you can see the NSX Advanced Load Balancer menu. First, the controller needs to be registered. You should provide a meaningful name, its URL and admin credentials. Next, the NSX cloud needs to be added by choosing a controller, giving the cloud a name and selecting from the list of available clouds registered to the specified controller. Last, we need to import the service engine groups which will be available to the Cloud Director tenants to run their virtual services. After picking the desired NSX Cloud, you need to determine whether the service engine group will be dedicated to a single edge gateway or will be shared between multiple. Give the group a name, pick the feature set, standard or premium, and select the service engine group to be imported. To learn more about the differences between the feature sets, please check out our blog as there is a dedicated post on that topic. You can add multiple controllers, NSX clouds and service engine groups within a single cloud director for scalability, service differentiation or any other purpose. Please note that currently vSphere clouds are not supported. With that, the integration is completed and Load Balancer as a service can be enabled for the tenants. The last thing a cloud provider needs to do is to activate the service for the tenants who requested it. This is done on the Edge Gateway owned by the tenant organization. When one is selected, there is a load balancer menu under its settings. When editing the general settings, the state needs to be changed to active and the feature set has to be selected. If transparent mode is activated, the tenant can check the preserved client IP when configuring a virtual service. The service network is recommended to use the default settings. Still, if they interfere with some of the organization's network settings, they can be further modified not to cause a conflict. After load balancing is enabled for this edge gateway, the cloud provider needs to assign a service engine group or groups that will be used for all the virtual services placed on it. As part of this process, you need to specify the maximum number of allowed virtual services to be created and how many of them will be guaranteed. After clicking save, the tenants can now create their pools and virtual services. Of course, this can also be done by the cloud providers as a managed service. Please note that unlike all the operations demonstrated so far, which only a cloud provider could perform, creating a pool and virtual service can be done by a user from the tenant organization with sufficient rights. In this case, it is the organization administrator. When tenants want to create a new virtual service, they need to select an edge gateway with load balancing activated and at least one service engine group assigned. Under the Load Balancer menu, they can still see the general settings and the service engine groups but don't have permission to modify them. First, a new pool needs to be defined. The user should give it a name, choose from the Load Balancer algorithms list a suitable one, put the default server port, set the graceful disable timeout and the persistent settings if applicable. Based on the service type and load balancing algorithm, the correct health monitor should be chosen and the passive health monitor should be activated or deactivated. Next, the pool members need to be added with the respective port settings and ratios. A server with a ratio of 2 gets twice as much traffic as a server with ratio of 1. If SSL is enabled, a certificate can be selected to validate the ones presented by the members of the load balancer pool. Once it is configured successfully, its health will be shown as unavailable and each member will be shown as down. This is because this pool is not yet used for a virtual service. Let's create one now. First, you need to give it a meaningful name and optionally a description. The correct service engine group should be selected as well as the server pool. After that, you need to choose the service type from the list and add its port or ports if multiple will be used. The last thing is to specify the virtual IP on which the service will be accessed. By clicking save, the configuration is completed. 
And that's about it. The tenant administrator has created their first virtual service utilizing the functionality provided by the integration between VMware Cloud Director and NSX Advanced Load Balancer. Stay tuned to our blog to learn all about the new features we introduced for this integration. Thanks for watching.